students in this video we are going to discuss about a disease called as angiostrongyliasis right so this is a disease which is commonly seen in human beings and it causes damage to the two regions of human beings they are intestinal region and another is neural region so neural region is nothing but your central nervous system region will get damaged once if a person is infected with this disease called as angiostrongyliasis right and intestinal region will also get damaged so what is the main cause uh, behind the causing of this disease called as angiostrongyliasis so there are two causes where it is mainly caused by two species of worms two species of parasites they are angiostrongylus costaricensis so this is one of the species uh, which is related to cause the disease called as angiostrongyliasis and another species of uh, parasite are angiostrongylus cantonises so this is another type of species which is related uh, to the parasites which causes the disease called as angiostrongyliasis right so now let us discuss about the life cycle of angiostrongylus costaricensis right so uh, normally uh, the life cycle will be both will be same but it causes damage to the neural region so this is a parasite which uh, results in the damage of the nervous, central nervous system and this is a species uh, which is related to cause a damage in the human beings at intestinal region so if this if this angiostrongylus costaricensis cause damage to the intestinal region then the particular disease is called as intestinal angiostrongyliasis if angiostrongylus costaricensis so this causes damage to the neural region then the particular disease is called as neural angiostrongyliasis right so this causes damage to the central nervous system right so now you have uh, got the basic introduction about this angiostrongyliasis and its causes right so now let us discuss about the life cycle of that particular parasite so the, uh, normally this life cycle begins with rodents so rodents are nothing but like if you take the examples of rat so this rat is considered as a definitive host so totally there are three hosts which will be involved in the life cycle of this angiostrongyliasis right so the first host is definitive host and we are going to consider rat as a definitive host which are nothing but the rodents so now what will happen here the rat uh, in the arteries region of the rat contains worms right so these worms or as these parasites are related to are related to angiostrongylus costaricensis exactly right because we are going to discuss about those particular parasite life cycle right hence these worms are belongs to angiostrongylus costaricensis and they are adult in stage right so these are commonly seen in arteries region mesenteric arteries region arteries are nothing but at the region of the heart so at the region of the heart in the rat these adult worms will be developed right so what are these adult worms angiostrongylus costaricensis exactly right so both male worm as well as the female worm will be present and now what will happen this will both undergoes fertilization i mean it undergoes copulation such that to release the eggs right and now these worms and that sorry that eggs will be released by these worms right and that eggs will move towards the anus region or else to the ileum region of the rat okay so now what will happen if that eggs will move towards the ileum region so once that eggs will move towards the ileum region then the hatching of that egg will be done right so once that embryonic egg will undergo hatching then the first stage larvae will get protruded out by the hatching of the egg and the whole process of this hatching will be done in the ileum of the rat right at the ileum region of the rat the hatching of the egg will be done such that the first stage larva will get protruded out exactly right so now what will happen now this larvae will get excreted out along with the fecus material from the rat right so now the rat will uh, excrete fecus material right and that fecus material will contains the first stage larva which has been protruded out along with the fecus material right so now here the fecus material will be excreted by the rats and then uh, that fecus material contains first stage larvae right not only one there are totally different uh, no, sorry there are totally many eggs which will be laid by that uh, copulation of the adult worms such that or uh, in that all of the eggs will undergo hatching process such that many first stage larvae will get protruded out by the hatching of the egg and that process will be done in the ileum so as it releases the fecus material then what will happen which one if the rat releases the fecus material then those all of those first stage larvae will get protruded out along with the fecus material so those are called as first stage larva first stage larva in the sense which means they are immature in form they are not adult in stage they are first stage larvae okay so now here this first stage larva will under uh, will be consumed by the gastropods right so they are uh, consumed or they are ingested by the gastropods 
right so gastropods are nothing but for example if you take snails so this, this will be consumed by the gastropods normally these gastropods feed upon the fecus material right so here the fecus material contains first stage larva remember this first stage larva belong to angiostrongylus costarricensis because we are discussing about the life cycle of that particular parasite so now what will happen actually so now once it enter into the gut of the gastropods then this first stage larva will undergo two moltings it undergoes two moltings so what is the first molting and second molting first molting is the first stage larva will get converted to second stage larva right so here the first stage larva will, will get consumed by the gastropods and once it enter into the gut region of the gastropods then the first molting will be done so what is the first molting the first stage larva will get converted to second stage larva so this is your first molting and now the second stage larva will get converted to the third stage larva which is called as the second molting so totally two moldings will be done in the gut of the gastropods so the best example of the gastropods if you take snails right and now here the finally the third stage larva will get uh, will get developed in the gastropods now the gastropods will release the third stage larva either it may be in the form of a fecus material which will be released by the gastropods right and here don't forget to remember these gastropods are considered as intermediate host right so now this is your second host so what is the first host definitive host which is considered as a rodents rat and here the first host uh, process has been completed such that it will be consumed by the intermediate host and the best example of the intermediate host you can take as a gastropods so what are the gastropods for example if you take as a snail and now the snails will release the third stage larva right it will be it releases third stage larva now this third stage larva will be consumed by the rats again for example if, if these rats will consume upon this gastropods which contains this third stage larva then again the rat will get, will get completely affected with this uh, parasite right and there is another way also so what is it if this third stage larva which is present in the gastropods i mean snails if they are consumed by the human beings if they are consumed by the human beings either in the form of contaminated food and water or else if they consume directly the snails then the human beings will also be infected right and here the third host is human host so totally three hosts has been completed so the first host is definitive host and the second host is uh, gastropod which is called as intermediate host and coming to the third host which is a human host so the life cycle will be done in the three hosts so once it enter into the uh, body of the human beings it will be consumed by the human beings then the worms will enter into the intestine and causes damage to your intestine and hence this disease is called as intestinal angiostrongylosis right so uh, till now we have discussed about the parasite called as angiostrongylus costarricensis right so which causes the damage to the intestinal region so if you see here this is the intestinal region right so here again the worms will get developed into adult stage so they are called as adult angiostrongylus costarricensis right so it enters into the intestinal region and causes damage to the intestine such that it releases the eggs by the copulation and again that egg garter goes hatching and then uh, the first stage larva will be released and those first stage larva will get released along with the fecus material which is secreted by the human beings and again the total life cycle will get repeated right and here uh, in this way the human beings will get infected at the intestinal region so this process will be done by the parasite called as angiostrongylus costarricensis but if the another parasite called as angiostrongylus contaminants will cause the damage to the human beings then it affects central nervous system of the human beings right and then particular disease is called as neural angiostrongylosis because it damages the neural region as i have mentioned you so these are the two parasites which are involved in the life cycle of angiostrongylosis which causes damage to the human beings in the two regions called as the intestinal region as well as the neural region so now let us discuss about the symptoms which are involved in the person who is infected with this disease called as angiostrongylosis so to discuss about the symptoms severe abdominal pain nausea vomiting weakness fever headache stiffness of neck so these are the common symptoms which you can see in a person who is infected with this disease called as angiostrongylosis so if you like my explanation you can like the video and you can subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates thank you